Well, welcome and thank you for uh, accommodating uh, some time to present to you. And um, I just want to briefly introduce myself. Uh, I look after the basically go-to-market activities for John Deere. And so to talk about future technology, um, I'm looking at that and working with the platforms what we call our factory platforms, to actually work out what is it that's coming, what's actually going to make an impact into agriculture across uh, the globe and also for us here in Australia. It's uh, just on a, a, a side subject. We do have some dedicated research and actually uh, development and advanced engineers here in Australia that actually do look at Australian conditions and, and actually drive the, the development of product um, back into the platforms. A couple of things I just want to talk about, and this is quite critical that I think when we start talking about future and, and emerging technologies and enabling us to make better decisions, this is a, a statement that came from a, a conference I attended, but yeah, I think I had some really good points about um, this site-specific management growing within our limits. So what it's about is trying to extract the maximum production and, and not just produce quantity, but trying to get the quality and, and make it repeatable and also sustainable. And we're looking here, and it's interesting that we, we talk about, as growers, we must understand the variability and the constraints that underlies the business and their production systems. And it's not just about one thing, it's, it's the total business activity from production to marketing to sales that actually has some massive impacts on what we do in actually assisting us to achieve our outcomes. When you try to break this down, it's type of interesting. I kind of made it a bit colloquial and said, look, that statement saying, we want to understand what's going on, really, what's occurring. Then we have to try and work out what do we want to do and understand exactly what we can do. Because sometimes there are two def majorly different paths, depending on what we want to do and what we can do. Then we actually want to know, if once we've decided that we can do something, we want to know what we, can, what we actually did so that we can review and understand exactly what that impact was. And more importantly, as we work through this journey, we want to actually gather the information, understanding, so that we can actually learn and continuously improve. So the question is, how does emerging technology impact this type of process? Because frankly, looking at a growers' perspective, we want to understand and be engaged right across the spectrum of, of growing. And there's certain criteria that we, as growers, we type of uh, have uh, impacted by, and it's really around these three elements, the soil, the water, and the, and the plant. And there's so much going on in, in each respective area, whether it's in managing and nutrients and plant, that it is just a, 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 almost an overload of data information and control that we have to type of undertake. Interesting that John Deere is focused on this, because realistically, when you utilize our product, it impacts the activities that you do in these, these realms. So when we look at the production cycles or fundamentals, as we go through the cycle of, of trying to grow a crop throughout a season and make it sustainable within those constraints we've just talked about, we typically say, look, we want to apply something, we usually want to measure something, we usually want to under analyze and understand what we've do done, and then all we want to actually learn from that and plan again. So from season to season, to crop to crop, to rotation to rotation, managing soil, managing plant, managing uh, um, the water management, this type of process comes into play. It's an age-old process. It's a continuum that we've been on for years and years. And I've heard a, a, a precision, at a precision ag conference, a, a grower particularly said he's, he was in a broadacre area, but um, you'll get the gist of what we're talking here is, he said, I have 40 chances in my lifetime to get this thing right. And so if you're uh, into horticulture, you might have a few more, maybe rotations in there, but basically you have 40 seasons or 40 cycles that you can actually reiterate, try and learn as much as you can, change how you do it, improve to actually make a difference to the bottom line that you're trying to achieve. Basically, our tools get used in that. So what we're looking for, the key drivers for majority of growers is really about this financial return, this bottom line. So we're talking about, and, and I think David was talking, you know, we're trying to get costs out of robotics to make it easier and cheaper and everything else. This is the bottom line that actually has an impact to how we actually uh, work towards developing and improving. 
and we have a desire to improve the output and the quality. And I think this is, um, in Broadacre, and, I'll, and I'm calling from that because it's probably a bit more of my experience instead of the horticultural phase, we probably focused, have been focused more on output quality, uh, quantity instead of quality. Whereas in horticultural aspects, you are very much associated, you cannot do one without the other. And that's very, very critical because the impacts of what's happening with how you use equipment, what you do and when you do it, can have a huge impact on this process. So we want to have this desire to understand the relationships between these characteristics and try and understand where we're going. And, and I haven't talked about technology yet because this is underpinning. This is what we do. How we do it starts to bring in the technology piece. So I was asked to talk about harvest technology and if you look at John Deere, our, in particularly in horticulture, our harvesters are probably a little bit uh, scarce in this industry. But I do want to talk about uh, uh, our equipment does get used, particularly in a lot of those applications, and I want to give a set a direction of where we're going, what we're trying to achieve in delivering the products that we're trying to for, for the growers. Predominantly, we want to look towards providing yield and quality. So take this information that is either done in the field, understanding what the yield quali quality is, or sorry, the yield quantity, and then actually relate that to what the quality is at a grading station, how you grade it, where you, you're processing, you actually find a grade process and say, right, this, is, this has got a certain grade, it has a certain dollar value. How does that relate them back into the land that it came off and how can we continuously improve? The other area that we want to focus on is also this operate, operational and logistic efficiency. So not only you know, how we've actually got this, uh, grown this crop and got it off the land, but actually moved around and actually made all that impacts and how can we reduce the costs? And, and David was looking at, well, maybe we can use robotics and remove the labour content. And that would be an extremely great, exciting um, development. Well, I'm going to actually draw upon some activities that happen in the broadacre field that we are looking to see where do they expand into the other segments. And particularly one here, we, it's, a, it's a product called Machine Sync. And I want you to think about this logistics space. We didn't call it combine and grain cart, we called it machine sink. So our future is that we are looking at operations that require multiple machines in the field to collect, to, to service, to do support or uh, activities that we're trying to conduct. So these, uh, currently we actually have one lead machine that will actually control, monitor and actually position the secondary unit or third unit. And if you're in the um, session last year, I believe uh, my co uh, a colleague, Kevin Platt, showed you some videos that were pretty, pretty exciting. So that was about having a, a multiple machines with one driver, that's a start to getting, you know, removing of, of labour. This now starts to that direction where we start to commercially offer less skilled labour, working with more um, dominant machines to actually make sure that we can actually get some efficiencies. So how does that apply into horticulture and where we're going in terms of understanding this information and where we make decisions is quite critical. And I'm going to draw upon the cotton industry, which, which you know, is an is a industry that has, has impacts particularly around water, and we've had a, you know, a resurgence of this industry over the last couple of years. But we've made some in investment and development around identification of quality of product or identification of the actual uh, product or cotton off the field. And it's RFID, which is nothing new. This is not new technology. It's how we use it and what we're trying to extract from it and the information associated with it that actually makes a difference. So we actually associate a package. So in this process that we actually harvest cotton, we're actually getting the yield map, which we understand the volume. So, you know, we're looking to get that for horticulture as well. But how do you bring the quality aspect back into where it was grown in a certain field, certain time? So with this traceability, which enables us to identify from one point in the field to the other point in the field where this product came from, where this produce came from, and track it electronically, we can use that downstream through all the processing and post-processing uh, activities and actually associate quality attributes back onto this particular package. And this package then comes from a certain part of a field. 
Now, some of the, some of the, uh, the advantages of doing this is now understanding what are the drivers, what are the key impacts that impact your quality. Now, some of them today, you already know, and you control, and you control very well. Some of them, you think, how can I actually extract more? And so this is about collection of information to make better decisions, to be able to make uh, quicker and better decisions. However, those examples that we've talked about are actually more uh, not in the heat of the moment. So I've actually separated this information requirement out as we're trying to increase this productivity, that, uh, well not increase productivity, our profitability, making sure that we're getting the biggest bang for our buck basically is, is, is the desire of everyone. There's a requirement to have immediate information here and now to make clear decisions that will actually impact what I'm going to do, with come, which is coming off the field or actually looking after that plant or looking after that soil. It's the here and now because the local conditions within that plant, within that environment, actually dictate what you do to ensure that you have a crop at the end of the season. So there's some immediate need of information and then there's also this subsequent need of information, which is probably longer term. At the end of a season, let's go and analyse analyze what it is that we have. What can we do? How do? What can I do better next year? However, in both cases, there's some critical aspects around gathering this information to make better decisions. Firstly, the information or data that you're collecting has got to be the best it can be. Regardless whether you're using it immediately, I want to make a decision right now and change the, whether it's the rate, whether it's a, a, a technique, whatever it is in the field, to I want to make better decisions once I understand where that quality and where that volume of product has come from. So what is John Deere doing about this? Because we have had over the years, I think there's currently information overload. Oh, well, maybe not overload, there's information that seems to be information overload. Just trying to make sense of it all, making it easy accessible is a challenge, is that right? It's very challenging to actually make this accessible. And there's a lot going on in this operation. So you want to actually, we're looking at three pillars of what we call our John Deere farm site strategy. And uh, you may have heard of John Deere farm site, um, but this is around Machine optimization. This is about making sure that the machines are operating to their best performance they can under the conditions that they're operating in. And we need to know here and now, while we're operating that, or have an operator working that, what is going on, what have I got to do, how can I actually make this better? The other thing is that once you have a whole heap of machines working in the field, you want them to work better. You want to understand where we've done this, where I need to be next, what have I got to move? Because that will then give you efficiencies with the labour, machine usage, and actually timeliness, which is probably even more important, of doing the activity required. And then the other thing is that each one of these machines and how it's actually integrated into the activity that you're doing produces information that can be used to make better decisions, ag decision support. And so what we do is, in the colloquial terms, you say each machine working together enabled by information. And this is where you would have seen over the previous years more integration between, uh, say, uh, certain implements that have got electronic control into our displays, our machines, to make that automation start to work even better. Hopefully, if we can impact these areas, we'll assist with this uh, pro agricultural productivity. So what's happening? Currently around machine optimization, we've got some functionality that occurs where we actually get in and access the machinery, understand what's going on. You can actually see where it's going, we can actually um, remotely access the machine and diagnose machine uh, challenges and try and uh, resolve any of the performance issues there. In the short to mid-term forecast, you know, what's coming is that we will remain rem remotely monitoring these machines even more will be sharing machine settings. So by having two machines in the field and you actually want to increase productivity, you know, one's working better than the other, let's share the, machine, the actual settings seamlessly, transfer that in, then and there and actually get mo both machines optimised. Then also you might have some unskilled labour working in uh, some of those uh, machines and actually want to remotely adjust it so it's actually working better. So being an expert, but you can't be on every machine that you actually are operating, being able to remotely access and, and, uh, and get into um, setting that up. The long-term capabilities, though, are 
Let's be proactive. We know how important the downtime is. We know how important missing a certain window for spraying. We under, understand that missing a window for getting a crop in or a crop off can actually make huge differences, particularly for quality. So understanding what's going on, how it's going on, and being proactive about it is this prognostic capability. So being not just diagnostic after the fact, but being um, prognostic. And we want to enhance that even further and then have, as we move into more uh, robotic, you could say autom automated machines, self-optimizing machines. These are machines that can actually look and say, right, I'm actually not set up right to get the best productivity. So it can be speed optimized to engine performance, saving fuel uh, um, in, the, in the operation that you're doing. An example of that here today, and this has just been released through uh, our Europe, is that we have an um, interaction called tra Attract Implement Automation. We, we do this for the hay and forage industry as well, and we call that tractor baler automation. But uh, we take some external signal from a, the, the implement that we're using, in this case, the Grimmy uh, potato harvester on the three-point linkage, oh, sorry, uh, planter on the three-point linkage. And its sensors and controllers now will actually operate the machine to what depth, it, optimizing the depth. So trying to get a consistent planting depth, uniform placement, and potentially reducing wear and saving fuel. Today available in our, in our R series from the six R's up. So these are the things working with external companies to actually have better interfaces to actually make this work better. From a logistics optimization, um, we want to actually, we can, we're currently we're opt trying to optimize single machines, you know, trying to get them to go certain places and say, hey, to an operator, you need to be in this farm, in this field, doing this activity. Where we want to be is actually making sure that as the machines, you require multiple machines in that field that you actually are informing them all where to go and actually identifying where they need to be next. For example, in an, in an intensive harvest operation, you might have several, several tractors with bins trying to get, uh, say, potatoes off the potato harvester and understanding we can start predicting from information coming, is that going to be full body end of the row? Instead of relying on two-way radio, we can actually rely on some of the information requiring um, coming from the machines to say, hey, this is what we've got to work with, this is where you've got to be next. In the longer term, we want to actually continue this uh, logistics optimization piece and basically get to where you can manage farm to farm, field to field, location to location, and start to understand that this is the shortest route, this is the best way to operate your equipment and move it and to actually uh, grow this crop. And uh, I'm just, in the last couple of days, we've been extremely busy with a client who's looking at doing a significant greenfield uh, startup project around some significant farming projects. And it's really interesting to think about, okay, and I, it's probably a challenge to yourselves, if you could start all over again with a green field, how would you do it differently on your, farming, on your farm today? How different would you actually start up? And, and it's interesting that these, these growers or this potential grower doesn't have any legacy. There's no fence line, there's no smaller block here, there's no it's starting with a green, a blank canvas. Now for us, that's a challenge because we're always trying to continuously improve, not to make the best thing at once from completely nothing. So logistics can actually assist us deal with those legacy issues that we've actually had. And as, to, as an example today, we've got telematics and fleet management and remote support, which actually comes through utilising the telematic systems of, of our latest equipment give you reports about how well they've been using, but also be able to get in there quite readily and actually understand where they are, what they're doing, and what's the, what's, if there's any challenges or issues with that machine. In the agronomic decision support space, this is, uh, for some people, for John Deere to be operating in this space seems to be a little bit foreign. It seems that uh, some, even agronomists, think that we're starting to be a bit more competitive. And in actual fact, that's probably farthest from the truth as we possibly can be. The, we don't want to be competitive in this space, we want to be complementary. So there's a lot of information that we want to be able to provide and share seamlessly that people can actually, and agronomists and, and all the people involved in your production and agriculture can actually quickly, easily get access to information, make a decision and apply. So actually starting to impact that cycle that I, I showed earlier. 
So currently today we have some manual transfer of information off our, off our displays and we can record everything from spray operations to, to some other inputs even from ISO controllers, so ISO sprayers, ISO um, harvesters. In the short term we want to actually move that to wireless information transfer. So there's no more touching and, and having manual labour to actually access this information and being able to access it via the web portal. And that means that you should be able to share and, and receive information from external consultants to actually make a better decision. In the longer term, we want to actually be able to have this more accessible for everyone in the industry to assist in making better decisions. You know, at the beginning we talked about, realistically, this is about more crop production but maintaining the quality and, 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 uh, and quantity to actually maximise our profitability. So if, if I was going to take an example about this decision support space and what we could do in moving the information quickly and seamlessly, I'm just going to use the example of spraying. So we've got a crop that we need to apply something, uh, a chemical on, and uh, I actually may have this around the wrong, uh, in not the correct order, but you'll actually understand what I'm getting to. When by the time you get to that field, something always changes, is that right? Something always changes, it's whether, it's, whether it's wind direction, do I need a different temperature, do I need to actually have a better, bigger rate, do I have to now have a bit more, have I got more pressure, is the, by the time I got to that last field, is that crop maturity a bit further on and I need to actually now change what I'm doing. From what I planned on, I need to make immediate change and I talked about having information to make that immediate decision. So there's some things today that we can actually impact this, where we have remote weather station on the machine to actually understand exactly where the what's happening with the, with the environment that you're going to be spraying into. And this enables a quick decision to say, right, do I need to increase the rate? Is it actually beyond the realms of spraying today at this point in time? We have um, information that can come from people in the field using mobile technology like iPads and iPhones where they can actually make decisions and say, right, I want to do this and actually be able to actually send that back and transfer that back into uh, um, the APEX software that they actually use for some of that management. We have the telematics, so in the spraying operation you can understand where they are and where they're going and what they're doing. But more importantly, understanding the environment that you're actually going to apply. And we've recently released this uh, a moisture probe, which is uh, just like everything else in the, you know, we can get a moisture probe, we can measure soil moisture. EC, those type of uh, um, parameters. But to go along with this sensor, we will we'll release, and actually just about released, uh, the leaf wetness, uh, and, uh, the solar radiation. So you can actually start establishing your evaporative transpiration, your uh, leaf wetness, what's the canopy like when you're trying to get a, a fungicide in there? Is it, is it really quite moist? Are we going to experience how many days of moist pressure have we seen in, in this crop? And position it so you can actually have a real time understanding of what's going on in the field. Now if you've gone to the field and understood I need to spray and these are now the environmental conditions that I'm going into, not just from a wind speed and, and direction and temperature, but now in the crop canopy, now you can actually understand or st start to make decisions, how can I actually make this bit more effective? Now there is a lot of information here and there's another one here where currently today we can have remote access. So you, uh, somebody from the uh, office can actually get into the machine and actually see what's going on the screen. Now remember, all this information here is about what? Making a better decision. The here and now, this immediacy of actually making good decisions in the field. And there's just so much going on in information. So where do you get that? Do you get that from this part of the display and you go over here and you've got to go to the website to get this and then you've got to go back over here to see this? Man alive, I know, I know these iPhones are pretty easy to use, but I don't think I get 10% of the usage out of them. So what's John Deere's plan for the future to actually make this happen? Because if we can assist in making that immediate decision better, hopefully the outcome of what we're trying to achieve is going to be easier to achieve. And so through a web portal which we call myjohndeer.com, we're allowing all this information to be the central repository of, this, of that information. But more to that, we wanted you to be able to share that with whoever needs to see that straight away so they can actually go, here's the accessibility, you have it, you see it. So as soon as you have accessibility to it, 
your agronomist, your, your farm manager, whoever's got needs to have information, your operator will have accessibility to that. And likewise, if there's information that needs to get back onto the machine, so an agronomist has made a decision, it can seamlessly flow back out. So we're trying, trying to make, that's the future that we see in terms of making agriculture easier to achieve. Taking all this information, making it easy accessible. So if I come back to this last slide, or one of the first slides I had, where we want to actually plan, apply, measure, analyze, understand and make good decisions so we can make a uh, continuous improvement. Those three pillars of the John Deere farm site and using technology, whether it's uh, machine optimization, logistics optimization, decision support, fits into this cycle. And that's what we're working towards to actually make the future become reality sooner. <laughs>